Hey everyone, welcome back! It's been quite a while since my last upload. Truth be told, there isn't much going on in Warframe. I've been having an absolute blast playing Tower Fantasy since launch last week, and that's basically where my time has gone. I do still play Warframe, and I'm actually waiting on Veilbreaker to drop later this month to make more content. Now, that doesn't mean I'm out of ideas, as I always have a ton of them, but I was just having much more fun streaming Tower Fantasy. Thanks to everyone who's been coming out to hang out at my streams, I always appreciate the support. Anyways, as you saw in the intro, this is a neat Blender Azima build. You may recall I made an Azima Shredder build almost a year ago, except it had one problem. Despite using a unique interaction for Mesa, it was clunky, had a logical damage ceiling, and was very, very mechanically intensive to run. Since then, the game has had many additions. Today, I bring you an updated version of that Azima, one that has higher damage, higher sustain, is much easier to set up, and quite frankly, is kind of broken. This is the balanced version of Theorycraft meant for normal play, however, there are ways to push this build even further, if you want. Thank you again, Azim, for bouncing some ideas off me while testing this one a month ago. I was unable to commit time to test back then, but I've finally taken a day off to figure out this beast, and I'm quite amazed by what we've all found. Let's go over the most important part of this setup. There are two ways to build this Azima, and it results in different uptimes in practice. One build produces Azimas that last 7.5 minutes. The other build produces Azimas that last 12 minutes. Yes, you heard that right. 12 minutes. There is a way to get them to last 30 minutes or 1 hour, but that relies on not having your focus trees maxed, so I'll mention that later. I'm sure you can imagine what we can do with an auto turret that lasts 7.5 or 12 minutes, right? But the other question, where does the damage come from? Asma is not known for its stellar damage. Simple. The solution is a combination of full defense strip, new arcanes, more unique mod interactions, and other weapons used as buffing tools. Let's go over the basic parts shared with the previous Azima video. We are still using the Mutalus Quanta. Sinoid Similar can do the same, however, you can also use Bursting Mass to nuke with Quanta, but it isn't needed to nuke on the setup. And the Allfire Orbs that shoot grant weapons that shoot through them, extra electric damage, crit chance, crit damage, and slight minus final damage. I have exactly 200% multi-shot on this weapon so that it always shoots a 3-stack orb. 3 stacks are the max, so there is no point going higher. Sinoid similar takes 4 stacks instead for the same bonuses, which is why I didn't use it. If you don't have a ribbon, just run as much multi-shot as possible since you can only shoot this once per setup rotation anyways. The other mods here are relevant, except Bursting Mass if you want, which nukes enemies in a 15 meter radius after the orb expires in 9 seconds, or you detonate it early. It deals all of the damage it absorbs, with a 200% multiplier in a 15 meter AoE. So what does this weapon do? Shooting Azima through a 3 stack orb will grant the Azima plus 500% electric mod plus 25% flat crit chance, plus 25% crit damage, and minus 33% final damage. This still results in a massive overall damage buff, as well as adding a crowd control element. Keep in mind, you don't actually need to bring Mutalus Quanta for this unless you are aiming for endurance. The Azima discs actually do enough damage already at base steel pad to instantly nuke areas so long as full strip is in play. The other issue with Azima is getting kills with it to start with. Azima is not a strong gun, so proccing the weapon arcanes that normally require kills, such as Deadhead, Merciless, and Dexterity are annoying, or require a melee. Instead, we're opting for Cascadia Flare today, with an Azima that includes heat, since this will let it stack up to 480% base damage extremely quickly. This solves the damage ramping problem of weapon arcanes. Let's actually look at that Azima build. It actually has barely changed since the last time I showcased it, besides running Cascadia Flare. The only other change is running Synth Charge instead of Hornet Strike. While we do lose 220% base damage here, Flare gives 120% more base damage than Merciless, and if you didn't know, every single time you all fire the Azima, it is treated as the last shot in the magazine, which will proc Synth Charge to multiply all your final damage from that disc by 3. Essentially, treat this build as if it had the innate 100, plus 480% base damage from Flare, then multiply all of that by 3 or 1740% base damage scaling, instead of before, Hornet Strike plus Merciless, granting just 680% base damage scaling. 
This results in the build doing 2.56 times more damage than before. In this particular build, I'm using Run's Prime Heated Charge instead of Prime Slip Magazine, so that the Heat procs can proc Cascadia Flare and ramp up the damage super fast without needing kills. This is what results in a 7.5 minute Asthma Disc. If I use Prime Slip Magazine instead, then my discs will last 12 minutes. But I would have to swap to Merciless Arcane, which is only 1380% final base damage scaling and requires kills to get going. Though the 30% reload boost will let me squeeze out one extra alt fire per DPS rotation. Viral 6060s are super important on this build since Asthma has a radius, which appears to be somewhere between 25 to 30 meters. This will easily let us multiply our damage output by up to 4.25 times as we stack more discs, while the heat procs will also scale infinitely due to procs refreshing the timer. I don't run Galvanize Seal on Azuma's alt fire because the base damage bonus actually doesn't apply for some reason. The rest are standard crit mods, Galvanize Multishot, and Primed Bane since not only do we have really good raw viral damage against full stripped enemies, but we will also have Electric and Heat Dots that double dip the Bane for 2.55 times more damage. And no Electric buffs granted from Mutalist Quanta Orbs do not combine with any elements modded on the weapon, so we will not get radiation on this Azuma. Prompt pistol ammo mutation will definitely be needed with the sheer amount of on fires we dump, which consume the entire magazine each time. Our last weapon slot today is Vastalock. Now, you only need this if you're doing endurance really, but it's utility since we already have sources of full armor strip from our frame, Zaku. This is for if you want to venture out elsewhere to recharge Arcane Pistolier away from your gaze full strip aura since your Asmas will probably be killing everything there instantly. And you don't want to recast your gaze and move it away. It's a basic armor strip build, and none of the mods here really matter except Prime Fury and Shattering Impact. You can run more attack speed if you want, the rest are just utility mods for bonus status to apply while stripping so your asthma can kill easier to proc Pistolier, like pre-priming Viral, Last Thing's Thing makes them last longer. That's it. To strip as fast as possible, alternate forward melee and neutral melee in the high noon stance. Alternatively, you could just bring a Glade Prime with this basic heavy detonation build, if you don't feel the need to bring a separate melee to armor strip. I'm going to quickly mention that our Zaku has 135 strength today. He reaches 160 with growing power, but we need 200 to have enough for Gaze to full strip. This is achieved with Focus 3.0 in the Angels update on the Matarai tree. Not only is Void Strike essential to set up the Azuma nuke, but Matarai also brings us Sling Strength for 40 extra strength needed to hit 200. This is easily activated with a double Void Sling and lasts 20 seconds, which is more than enough time to set up the next bunch of discs. Okay, so how exactly do we actually make the Azuma last so long? This is where some funny math comes in. We are min-maxing ammo efficiency on the Asthma to get as close as possible to 100% without surpassing it. This is because Asthma breaks at above 100% ammo efficiency and becomes treated as having zero ammo efficiency. However, Asthma also snapshots the ammo efficiency acquired at the moment of on fire. The order of ammo efficiency calculation is Arcane Pistolier is always applied first. Then Void Fuel is considered additively on top of it. Yes additively, and this is the only additive source left of ammo efficiency in the game. After Void Fuel, the remaining ammo efficiency is multiplied by energized munitions. So let's see this in numbers. I'm using a rank 2 Arcane Pistolier today. This is important because if I go any higher, I surpass 100% efficiency with Void Fuel. So we have 51% efficiency, and Void Fuel adds 40%, so now we have 91 ammo efficiency. Energized Munitions now applies a multiplicative lean, cuts it down to 97.75 efficiency. AKA we only use 2.25% of our ammo per shot. This makes Asthma last 44.5 times longer than normal, which is usually 10.5 seconds. This translates to the 7.5 minutes we observed. If we add Prime Slip Magazine, it multiplies the final value by 1.55, or the 12 minutes I mentioned earlier. For a way to make it last 30 minutes or more, it requires rank 1 Void Fuel, and you'll see what you need for that down in the description and pinned comment. Finally, let's look at Zaku themselves, and why they are the best frame for this. Other frames I considered were Caliban or Frost, but Zaku is just the easiest one to use with near infinite duration armor strip zones, built in passive crowd control even when not stripping due to Zyda magnetic bubbles to block enemy fire, and being able to refresh strip zones with their 4 even when you aren't there. As previously mentioned, I have growing power to hit 160 strength. This combined with Matarai Sling Strength but puts us at 200%. 
So the Gaze can strip 100% of all armor and shields from enemies within range. I still push for 184 range, so that Gaze has a 22 meter radius, which is only slightly smaller than the actual hit range of an asthma placed in the center. Duration of Gaze is mostly relevant since it will be refreshing all our abilities with the Vast in Time, which freezes all timers for 57 seconds at 226 duration. Essentially, press your forward once a minute to keep your armor strip zones active at choke points. Remember, you can keep up to two gazes active at once at different locations. You might be also wondering, why would I ever subsume Graspalock off if I'm making a turret build? Simply put, this is a better Grasp of Lock. They kill things even when you aren't there, are infinitely scaling in the sense that they literally do more damage the longer they shoot because of refreshing heat procs, they aren't limited by Lock's tiny base 8 meter range, and you can shoot as many Azimas as you want. Both the range of Lock and Max guns that can steal our time to the range snap. Azima hits out to nearly 30 meters, which is impossible to reach with Lock, and you can easily pile at least 6 discs per setup rotation, which can be done every 40 seconds if you so choose and each setup lasts at least 7.5 minutes. I can literally go and make food and drinks coming back only to press 4 once a minute and they will kill everything. Pramshire Footed is just a staple to make setting up easier, but you really don't need it on this build. Triggering Arcane Pistolier for 51% ammo efficiency baseline should be easy with Gaze and Bast Lock Shattering Impact available as needed. Vigor Swap here is important because you will be shooting Mila's Quanta all fire orbs out before you shoot Asthma Discs through it. The base damage buff also helps. If you aren't doing endurance though, you can completely skip this mod and run Rolling Guard instead to remove statuses and better shield gating windows. And also skip the Quanta, which would let you bring normal rifles like Kuvazar or Brahma if you want. Energize is our sole source of energy on this build, but it really shouldn't be that much of an issue with how high our duration is and with neutral efficiency. Energize Munitions is a flat 75% ammo efficiency on cast that is unaffected by strength. However, the 226 duration makes it last 11.32 seconds, meaning it is the first thing to cast in our DPS rotation. Shield gating should be easy on this build, since I'm running a Jin Sentinel with the Prisma Burst Laser, the only pistol sentinel weapon, so that it can carry our two Augur mods since our asthma isn't using them. This results in a 3 Augur set bonus to restore all our shields on cast when we use Vast on Time. Jin because infinite lives with reawaken if you want to bring it into endurance. The sheer amount of void bubbles created from Zada's Whisper should also help with survivability, since enemies will not be able to shoot you back when they are procced. How to do the DPS rotation? Find enemies at a choke point. Double Void Sling for strength buff. Magus Lockdown helps to create a bit of a safe zone. Cast Gaze on choke point. Shoot heads to activate Arcane Pistolier on kills. Then cast Energized Munitions. Then go into Operator and cast Void Strike for Void Fuel. Now come back to frame. Optional leaf alt fire the Mutalist Quanta once for damage buff orb. Now spam your asthma alt fires as fast as you can before pistol leader runs out. You should have enough time to get about 5 or 6 discs. This should be enough to shred everything in the vicinity of gaze. Now your sets. If you wanted to scale even higher, just proc pistol leader again, cast energize, cast void strike, and dump another 5-6 asthma discs on the same area. Just keep in mind you can only cast void strike once every 40 seconds. Or you can set up a second gaze zone at a different choke point and place 5 or 6 asthma discs there. Now you are set for the next 7 minutes and then can AFK besides recasting your 4 once a minute. Cast your 1 for Zadis Whisper for even more CC so enemies can't shoot back as well as a little extra damage. And there you go, the new, updated, deadly asthma tile nuke. Infinitely scaling and infinitely easier to use compared to the Mesa build I showcased last year. Hopefully you'll have some fun for this, and we can finally bring Azuma into the spotlight. Yes, I've even heard stories of people already taking Azuma into Steel Path Defense, Endurance, as well as Arby, so this weapon definitely works. Time to have fun with our Death Sprinkler again, cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed, I'm trying my best to get new information out always, as soon as possible, like I'm done with covering the news Echoes of Zeraman update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis, as well as when Veilbreaker drops. Don't miss out on any of that, do you? And that'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.